Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for tuning on in. Today we're going to be talking about which Rocky Mountain ski resort you should ski at. I'll go from my least favorite all the way to my favorite. So, let's get started. So before we get too far into the weeds, I want to define the scope of this video. We're going to be talking about Rocky Mountain Resorts in the USA only. So Banff or Lake Louise or Whistler in Alberta or British Columbia, that's off the list. I'd like to go there. I haven't been there. We're going to be talking USA only. So when we relegate the scope only to the USA, you're still talking somewhere between 60 and 70 resorts in the American Rocky Mountains. So we'll whittle it down a little bit further by looking at mountains that have a vertical drop from the peak to the base of at least 2,000 feet. For the folks that use more reasonable units, that's 610 meters. Now that being said too, we're going to be looking primarily at Icon Mountains with a few Mountain Collective and Epic Pass Mountains mixed in. Unfortunately, that 2,000 foot requirement throws out a lot of independent mountains. So mountains like Pajarito or Ski Santa Fe or Wolf Creek end up getting thrown out. That being said, I highly recommend y'all ski some of those smaller mountains. I've had the most fun on some of the smaller mountains before, a lot less crowded and a lot less expensive. But this is dealing with the big mountains in case you're looking to spend a whole lot of money. Generally those larger mountains are a little bit more expensive. And as a result, I want to help y'all be able to make an informed decision on where you decide to ski. Number 13 and dead last on this list is Breckenridge. If there's one place I recommend you do not go if you enjoy skiing is Breckenridge. It's very, very Instagrammable, and as a result, you have a lot of people pretending to ski there. They don't really care so much about actually skiing. They want to look like they've been skiing, though. That being said, it does have a vertical drop of 3,400 feet and has 34 lifts that you can go up. So it's a pretty big mountain. But like I said earlier, the thing I hate so much about it is people don't go there to ski. They go there so that they can say they went to Breckenridge. It's pretty annoying, and the crowd that you find there is also pretty annoying in my opinion. So number 12 on the list is Copper Mountain. It's a little bit further from Denver and a little bit closer to Leadville than Breckenridge, both geographically and culturally. It has a vertical drop of 2,600 feet and has 22 lifts. That being said too, it's still a Colorado ski resort off of I-70. So the annoying $20 sandwiches, $8 coffees, $16 beers, all that crap that really turns me off yeah, it's still there at Copper Mountain. But that being said, there's a little bit less of the Instagram crowd and a few more serious skiers there at Copper Mountain. They do have the really big half pipe and you see some really serious people doing some tricks there. So as a bonus mountain, I'm gonna say 11 and a half is Arapaho Basin. When I visited Day Basin, the whole mountain wasn't open, so I feel like my judgment isn't really a fair one considering I wasn't able to ski the whole mountain. But that being said, it's still one of those close to Denver ski resorts where you have every asshole from Denver coming in to go ski. In case you couldn't tell, I'm not too big of a fan of the ski resorts close to Denver. I'm not saying that everybody from Denver is a bad person. I've got friends there. But generally, that part of Colorado is starting to feel more and more like LA. And I wish people would treat each other with more respect around the Denver metro area. So, number 11 on the list is Winter Park. It's just over 3,000 vertical feet of drop, and there are 25 lifts servicing the park. The advantage here is that there's a train that actually runs from Denver all the way to Winter Park. So the sitting in traffic on I-70 is not as much of a thing if you can take the train. If y'all have seen my other videos, you know that I love trains. And as a result, this bumps Winter Park up on the rankings list. Here you do have a bunch of folks that come in from Denver and it is very crowded. And yes, they do try and sell you those $20, $22 barbecue sandwiches, which are way overpriced and they try and gouge you for every dollar that you have. But that being said too, there are people that will take and pack their lunch and are just trying to ski or get better at skiing. So take it for what you will. I do enjoy the fact that Winter Park is so huge. There's something for everybody there. So if you can manage to get away from the crowd at the base, you know, and kind of go off into the woods and do your own thing, I think you will find that it's pretty enjoyable. But that being said too, you are in Colorado near Denver, so you will find big crowds near the base and traffic leaving Winter Park. So, number 10 on the list is Deer Valley in Utah. Gold-plated sinks and signs from the former Olympics. 
The reason why I rank Deer Valley higher than the Colorado resorts is that the traffic from Salt Lake City to Park City isn't nearly as bad. Some days it is pretty bad, but it's nothing like I-70. The second reason why is that the Utah snow seems to be a little bit higher quality than that of the snow in Colorado or New Mexico. I don't know what it is, but Utah snow seems to be a little bit nicer to ski on for whatever reason. Uh, it's not nearly as grainy, it's softer powder, and you can just fly down it. That's the only time I've straight lined a double black is in Deer Valley. That being said too, the reason why it's not ranked higher is that one, yes, it's kind of like a ski resort for investment bankers. Everything is super bougie. And as a result, you know, you get some maybe snooty people, people with more money than sense or manners. That's just the nature of it. But you talk about awesome snow and like explorable terrain, Deer Valley's got you. They have a 3,000 foot vertical drop and they have 21 lifts running at full capacity. And all the buildings are stone. You almost feel a little bit detached from reality. So number nine on the list is Steamboat Springs back in Colorado. Here they have 3,600 feet of vertical drop and 16 lifts running. Reason why this ranks a little bit higher than some of the other Colorado resorts is that they seem to have a lot more snow come their way. And plus, you're further from I-70, so the crowd isn't nearly as irritable. It seems like it's a little bit more small towny. That may be just because you're a little bit further from the interstate. But that being said too, the mountain isn't nearly as gnarly as some of the other mountains. It seems like some of the runs are, I guess, relatively gradual. So if you're looking to go hard with like a really hard mountain to ski, I don't think this is the place. But you know, if you've got a family and you're just trying to have a good time, I think Steamboat might be the place for you. But like I said, nothing too gnarly there at Steamboat. Number eight on the list I have as the Cottonwoods in Salt Lake City, Utah. I guess more specifically, it's closer to Sandy. But when I say the Cottonwoods, I'm referring to Alta, Snowbird, Brighton, and Solitude. They're up the Cottonwood Canyons from the Salt Lake Metro area. The vertical drop varies, but for solitude, I think it's right around 2,500 feet. And the number of lifts also vary, anywhere from six lifts running to 13 lifts running, depending on which resort you go to. The reason why I have this ranked higher than Deer Valley is that there's less of a snooty attitude at the Cottonwoods compared to Deer Valley. That being said, it can get pretty crowded there, but if you go during the week, or you know, maybe you sneak out of work on a Friday. It won't be terribly crowded. And plus, you're in Utah, so you know, best snow on earth. It says it on your license plates. That being said too, skiing in Utah, going down those canyons and ravines, there's nothing like it. It seems to be unique to the Wasatch Range, where you can go down those canyons and you feel like you're a pilot going through a ravine. It's awesome, and there's plenty of opportunity for that in the Cottonwoods. And I think it's a little bit cheaper than the Deer Valley Ski Resort. Number seven on the list is Aspen Snowmass. Like it or not, it's probably the most famous ski resort in America. Maybe that's because of Dumb and Dumber. I mean, if you were to ask anybody what's the most famous ski resort in the United States, they'd probably tell you Aspen. That's up for debate. If you want to talk about it in the comments, feel free. From peak to base, the vertical drop is 4,400 feet and they have 17 lifts running. It's amazing how big this place is. There's a reason why it has such a reputation. It's huge and it's awesome. <sighs> that being said too, one of the drawbacks is people with more money than skill sometimes fly in to go ski here. Generally, they tend to congregate around the base area, but if you go further up the mountain, it's some of the most beautiful views ever. And depending on the time of year, you can find big wide trails almost completely empty for you to do your own thing. Just you and the mountain and the trail and it's awesome. That being said too, one of the drawbacks is you're in Aspen, Colorado, which I'm not a fan of the city itself. That being said, if you head north, back up 82 towards Glenwood Springs, that town seems to be pretty fun. The people seem to be a little bit more real there. There's a nice diner where you can get a milkshake with booze in it if you want. Make sure you're 21. Generally speaking, the folks just outside of Aspen in Glenwood Springs are on the way out. They're pretty nice and they're pretty serious skiers, but folks inside the town, they're kind of not living in reality. Just be ready for that. But like I said, folks outside of town, they're, they're great folks and you know, great people. So take it for what you will. Number six on this list is Jackson Hole Mountain Resort in Teton Village, Wyoming. This is probably the steepest, gnarliest mountain on the list. I mean, sure, other mountains have steeper runs than Jackson, but the thing about this one is it just beats you up if you get outside of the base area. And as a result, there seems to be an elevated fraction of people that have the 
you know, get off the mountain if you don't know what you're doing mentality. For better or for worse, that's the way it is. Like I said, this mountain beats you up, and if you're not an advanced skier, you probably shouldn't ski here. But I really wish people were a little bit more welcoming and a little bit more friendly there. Most folks are, you know, when, when 15 to 20% of the folks you run into just kind of act like they're, they're, they're better than everybody else, you know, it, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. That being said, no other mountain has Corbett's except for Jackson Hole. But one caveat I want to give, folks buying property in Jackson, Wyoming have more money than sense, and a lot of them aren't grounded in reality. I saw an advertisement for a piece of land that backed into the Snake River for $25 million, and you know, folks will spend that kind of money and live there. You know, a lot of folks, you know, they just want to be there for you know, tax location purposes and not really contribute to the community. So I'd say the locals that have been there for a long time, everybody that I interacted with that had been there for a while, they were incredibly kind, incredibly welcoming. But they did warn me, they said, hey, you know, there are folks, you know, that are driving up the cost of living here to the point where we can't really have a community because nobody wants to contribute to the community that's moved here and they just want to consume. So just something to watch out for. But by and large, there's nothing like Jackson Hole and that's the way it is. But if you are going to Jackson, I recommend you stay down in the basement of the Anvil Hotel. It's a hostel and you always meet some interesting characters there. Number five on the list is Snow Basin. It's east of Ogden in the Wasatch Range in a little town called Huntsville. So the vertical drop at Snow Basin is 2,900 feet. There are 11 lifts running and a lot of them are gondolas, which can lead to some pretty interesting conversations if you get on with the right people. The reason why Snow Basin is ranked higher than any of the other Utah resorts is the fact that the crowd seems to be less of a crowd there because it's further from Salt Lake City. And that being said too, the crowd isn't snooty because you know, you're not in Park City. And it just seems kind of like down to earth people, but some phenomenal skiing. Like you want big runs with good Utah snow, you go to Snow Basin. You want a good view of Ogden. If you want to look down from the very top and look down to the east, you can get that at Snow Basin. One of the added benefits or drawbacks is that the lodge is pretty bougie, but the food isn't terribly expensive if you decide to buy food there. I mean, they're not going to judge you if you pack your own, which may be one of the reasons why I rank this a little bit higher than the other ones on this list. By and large, it's a very nice ski resort and it feels a little bit less judgmental than some of the other ones ranked lower on the list. I highly recommend you check it out if you got the chance. And if there's one place you go ski in Utah, I'd say Snow Basin. Number four on the list takes us back to the Tetons in Wyoming. It's Grand Targhee, baby. To get to Targhee, you actually have to go through Idaho, and their home city for Targhee is Driggs, Idaho. They have an awesome grocery store, and it just seems like a nice little laid back town. The vertical drop at Grand Targhee is just over 2,200 feet, and they only have five lifts running. But you're skiing in the Tetons, and there's not a big crowd at all. You're in Wyoming, by the way, of Idaho, and so as a result, people sort of respect you and trust you to do your own thing. There's not a lot of butt wiping and whining there. So if you want to ski in minus 10 Fahrenheit, that's your prerogative, and they're gonna limb run the lifts. But if you don't pack accordingly, they're not gonna feel sorry for you if you do get frostbite. Some of the trails there are super fun too. Skiing through those ravines at Targi is incredibly fun and I recommend it. Plus, the views there make you feel like a pioneer. You can look out towards Idaho and Montana and feel like an adventurer. It just feels awesome to ski there. There's not a lot of built up everything. You know, there's like one or two places at the base where you can get a beer or a sandwich and they don't gouge you for everything you're worth at the shop. It just feels fun, you know? It doesn't feel like a big tourist trap. I prefer to keep it that way, so don't go to Target if you're looking for a big Instagram experience. They don't do that there. They got bluegrass playing at the base. Number three on the list is Sun Valley, Idaho. They were actually ranked number one by Ski Magazine a year or two ago. They're number three on my list, but an awesome ski resort nonetheless. The vertical drop from peak to base is just over 3,500 feet, and they have 18 lifts running. It's in Ketchikan, Idaho, a little bit of a ways away from Boise or Idaho Falls, but well worth the drive if you're in that area. The views from the top are absolutely breathtaking, and you have big, wide trails to, for you to ski on. It's pretty steep because you're in the Northern Rockies, and one of the things that sets Sun Valley apart from all the other ski resorts is just how friendly and helpful the staff is. Generally, the folks you meet there are incredibly kind. It seems like that's more of a thing in the Northern Rockies. One of the things that I do want to warn y'all about is it does get a little bit icy actually towards the bottom. 
I think what happens is you can have a little bit of melt and refreeze. And so trying to stay in control if you have big wide skis and it's not a powder day can be a little bit difficult closer to the base. Just pick your skis accordingly and you should be okay. But that was something that I had a little bit of trouble with there. Number two is a mystery mountain. I'm not gonna tell y'all where one of my favorite places to ski is in the Rockies. I don't want it to become too crowded. I don't want it to become like Colorado. I will say that they have at least 12 lifts and the vertical drop is at least 2,500 feet from the peak to the base. Uh, if y'all wanna go ski there sometime with me, just let me know in the DMs. I will tell y'all this and with this information, you might be able to deduce where it is. First of all, it's kind of a backwoodsy place. I've seen guys ride the lift to the top not carrying ski poles, but instead carrying a guitar, and they weren't wearing any kind of bibs or jacket. They were just wearing ski boots and their underwear and carrying that guitar. And they went down the lift having a good old time. I think one of the things that sets this place apart from all the other resorts is the fact that the crowd is just so awesome. Everybody there is so chill. It's just a good place to be. Like I said, I won't tell you the name. Given the videos that you're watching, you might be able to tell where it is. But if you want to go there sometime, message me or you know, let me know in the comments and we'll set up a time to go ski there. You might be a total stranger, but you'll be a friend of mine if we go ski there together. Other thing that makes this place so special is the fact that it is pretty dang steep. It gives Jackson Hole a run for its money as far as steepness and beating you up. You ski here enough times, you will become a good skier. Plus, some of the best terrain in this place is actually off the beaten path a little bit. If you're willing to take some risks, you'll find some really awesome trails here. So, the moment y'all have all been waiting for, number one on the list is Big Sky in Montana. This is without a doubt the biggest, the baddest, the best ski resort in all of the United States. They're unapologetic about wanting to be number one, and they have a list of goals that they're trying to meet by 2025 in order to be number one. Like I said, they're unapologetic about wanting to be the best, and they're executing in order to become the best. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with American exceptionalism. If I had one week to live, and I could bop over to anywhere in the world in its wintertime, you bet your ass I'd go to Big Sky. The vertical drop from peak to base is over 4,300 feet. The trails here are insanely wide. And while the weather may get a little bit cold, when I was there it was like minus 15, I had the time of my life in Montana. Plus, it's Montana. Everybody that I talked to that was local to the area was incredibly kind, incredibly willing to talk to you, and incredibly willing to help you out if you needed it. It may sound a little bit weird, but I wish I could take Montana and put it in a bottle and drink it when I was sad. Just the kindness and the toughness of the people in Montana is unlike anywhere else. And that's reflected in Big Sky. Big Sky wants to be the best and they're gonna do their best to get there. And while yes, the weather may be cold, the mountain is beautiful and it's just freaking awesome. Big Sky has a vertical drop of 4,300 feet and services 36 lifts in total. It's huge. Talking about Bozeman a little bit more, it's a really cool town. It may have been overrun with Californians as of late, but a couple of cold snaps and they'll be right back in LA. More on Bozeman, the town itself is just really awesome. It feels like an old high western town and everybody that works the shops is incredibly friendly. I highly recommend you go up to Montana if you get the chance, but that being said too, please, please, please be very respectful of the culture there. So what do I mean by be respectful of the culture? Specifically, if you're offended by guns or weed or abortions, just mind your own business, okay? Stop telling other people what to do. That's very true in Bozeman, and I guess the other place where it rings true is down here in Albuquerque. Here, the state treats people like adults. That's sort of the culture throughout the Rocky Mountains. What I mean by please be respectful is don't try and change that and don't try and tell individuals what to do. I digress, that's my rant. So I hope y'all found this video valuable. If you did, uh, give it a like. If you like my content, subscribe. If you don't like it, let me know what I could have done better. But either way, thank you so much again for watching and hopefully I'll catch you in the next video. But until then, rock on and enjoy the Rocky Mountains and enjoy skiing.